Hey gang, welcome back to Thrifty Crafts. I was reading One Piece Like I Do, and I ran into Oda's wonderful color spreads. Every few issues, he'll do one of these completely random color spreads. The crew is usually in some strange situation, and they're full of these joyful details that I just can't get enough of. So I decided to make one of these things. Well, specifically, Tony Tony Chopper in a Tank. So I made a little armature, I bulked out that armature with some aluminum foil to save on clay, which I am now adding a thin layer of. And that is called ending a sentence with a preposition. I come from a mostly drawing background, so I kind of like to sketch the face on to get the scale right. Now I'm adding the bill to uh, this iconic hat, I guess. It should be noted that if you aren't up on One Piece lore, that chopper is actually a reindeer that ate the human human fruit. So basically, he's still a reindeer, but has the magical power of being a human. He's also a doctor. He's a ship's doctor. So yeah, he's just like a, a weird little... Ah! <laughs> oh Jesus, what fresh horror is this? Anyway, yeah, just a normal animal that ate a devil fruit. In sculpting, this is called mushing the face together. Next, I pop on Chopper's adorable blue nose. Fun fact, I have no idea why it's blue. Uh, if you know, tell me in the comments. That was a trick. Since his eyes are perfect circles, I can use this dowel tool to make some little indents for them. Then sculpt in some brows and a mouth hole. And we have the startings of a less horrible face. But we still need some more details. Chopper has lips, right? I'm giving Chopper lips. One of my favorite bits about the original drawing is how he's eating onigiri and has just like this massive mouthful of rice. So I'm putting these big old cheeks on him. Now for Chopper's insignia. I add another layer of clay and smooth it out and shape it. Then I decided to dig out the X emblem. So I also didn't know why Chopper has an X on his hat, but I doubted I could trick you into commenting twice, so I looked it up. Apparently it's, uh, it's the medical cross, it's just tilted. Not sure if these are technically ear flaps, but I'm calling them ear flaps. This helmet's got ear flaps. And while I was at it, I thought I'd add the ears. Yep, it's starting to look like something. Time to give it a quick bake to save my progress. Now it's time to bulk out the body with some more foil and then cover that with clay. A little rope of clay quickly becomes the collar of a t-shirt. I used a pasta machine to make super thin sheets of cosplay, which I'm using to make the shirt. Cosplay is really great for stuff like this since it stays flexible after you bake it. I could do the same thing with Sculpey, but I'd have to be okay with it snapping off in a light breeze. Shaping little collars is super satisfying. If I'm being honest, adding clothes and fabrics to things is kind of like one of my favorite things to do in sculpting. Chopper gets his first arm. It's short enough and anchored at both ends, so I think I can get away with skipping armature for this one. I can't forget Chopper's hooves. Remember, he's a reindeer. And now to add in a sleeve and some wrinkles. It was fun, let's add some wrinkles to the shirt. Hey, he's got a shirt. Using a power tool to drill this tiny hole for armature is a lot, but it's fun. A little liquid Sculpey will act as glue for this arm armature turf. And then we just need to bend his arm into onigiri munching position and bulk it up with some more clay. All right, to make onigiri, you want to shape your rice into a triangle. Then cut up some nori and wrap it around the rice. And then cut a big chomp out of it. Now here's where the recipe gets weird. You're going to want to attach your reindeer hoof directly to the rice ball. I know it seems wrong, but trust me, it's easier this way. And then just squash that whole mess on your arm and Bob's your uncle. Now we get to add in some fun details with the sleeves. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch more fabric wrinkles as well. Now we have a shirt 
and two arms. Time to add the bandolier. God, I hope that's what it's called. Then I get out every sharp, pokey item I pretty much own to cut out these bullets because there's a thousand of them. Some good bullets. Now I really could have done this additional shirt work before the bandolier, but I would have had to bake the whole thing again if there was any chance of me not squashing all that work. And you know, it would have been fine to bake it again, but I just didn't feel like stopping. And we finish it off with a little rope of clay that'll become the bottom of his t-shirt. Here's another close-up. Chopper is nearly done. After another bake, I'm back at it with the power tools. Those holes are for antlers, of course. I just add a layer of clay to the armature and we're pretty much there. Time to build the tank. I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'll just go ahead and do the armature, foil, and wire move. You know, if it works, it works. And we have achieved Forbidden Donut. Odin knows that if you want to make something look all metal and industrial and stuff, you gotta slap some metal plating on it. And now I'm digging out a little hole for the gun barrel can't see the whole tank in the drawing, so I got to invent some stuff. I'm thinking a really simple hinge will do the trick. For the rest of the body, I thought XPF foam would be the thriftiest option. So I'm sketching the body out on some one inch foam, then a utility knife, and then an X-Acto blade. And I vaguely, well, it doesn't really look like a tank yet, but we're getting there. Then I'm just cleaning up the edges and shaping the treads a bit. This is a weird choice, but it ended up working. Uh, there are probably four or five better ways to make the covers for the tank treads than shaping them out of floppy clay, but hey, it worked in the end. I had some dowel, which was the perfect size for the gun barrel. So I cut it down and added some additional bits of clay to make it all tanky. Now you do want to use hardwood if you're going to bake it in the oven. At least that's what I heard Adam from North of the Border say. And I'm making sure to have a good bit of overhang so that it will look a little more like a hollow tube. So if it's gonna fit the body properly, I need to add a little bit more to the turret. So I made a big rope of clay and stuck it on. The shape of this thing reminds me of one of my favorite Star Wars toys from when I was a little kid. And holy shit, I just found the craziest picture. This whole turret looks like Squidward. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, I got distracted what's, what's happening. It, Looks like I'm making tank treads and, and oh look, they appear as if by magic. You note how when the body stays perfectly still, it's as if the tread appears out of thin air. Truly, truly a masterful illusion. One more bit on the bottom here and we have a perfect fit. So the drawing has some fun additional details that I wanted to include. So I made this ridge out of foam and I have a bunch of these horrendous dollar store pencils. They just don't work. So I've been breaking them down for spare parts. These tips can become little headlights. It's cute. And there are these ridges. I can just kind of cut them in. For the tread wheel, I don't, I don't speak tank. Um, I had a bunch of cheap little plastic gears from Michaels that they were just perfect. It is starting to look like a tank, but if we had some rivets, oh boy. A thin coat of acrylic paint will eventually make these look like tough rivets, but for now, we have a beautiful bejeweled tank. Do you remember the four mice from Oda's drawing? It's time to start making those. I have a wee armature and I'm building up some cosplay. I went with cosplay since I was worried that the mouse arms might fall off. So I'm shaping out his little beak and his helmet, and then a wee rope of cosplay becomes the lip of his army helmet. I'm keeping the faces pretty simple and just poking them with this little silicon sculpting tool. Yada yada yada, I added a bunch of clothes and stuff. I thought the tank could use some more detail to distract the eye, so I used a pretty aggressive roll and snap technique to make some bits I can glue in various places. What do you think these are? Flares? Nah, no, stupid. Maybe vents? Speaking of detail, one of the mice is popping his head up in the drawing, so I'm adding in his little safety bars. This tank needs a bottom. It won't be seen much, but still, we need to add a hatch and a whole bunch of rivets, of course. For some reason, I created the Target logo, and now I'm sanding and bedazzling it. Okay, drilling holes. The 
target logo is back and oh it's a tank lid of course but it needs some more crap glue to it so let's go we have the handle and of course some more rivets looking good yeah mm -hmm. anyway i thought some wire would work well as the little mouse tail it's cute and now everything gets a coating of black paint and mod podge and we are on to painting covering that black undercoat is pretty rough especially the lighter colors which take several coats but we get there eventually and we are starting to really look like chopper you have to be really careful painting the eyes since they're just so easy to mess up then of course the blue nose he is dang near recognizable I'm starting to add in some highlights to shape the cheeks. I'm sticking with mostly uh, blending wet into wet here. And you know, painting the rest of the bits. Now I can get some gunmetal gray for the bullets. Ah, crap, how do you paint camouflage? I guess I'll just do what I see in the drawing and see how it goes. Yeah, I think that works. That's camo, man. I'll do a little dry brushing for highlights. And dang, Chopper, you looking nice. Let's get you a little UV resin on the peepers to give them that extra shine. We can move on to the mice. I should probably have names for them. This could be Blue Guy, Blue Blue Man, Mr. Blue, Mr. Yellow, Mr. Pink, Mr. Red, Mr. Turret. We're base coating the turret now. Oh, that is looking tanky. Very Desert Storm. So we start with painting some shadows. Just going around all the areas where they reshadow. And now, dry brushing 101. Squirt some paint on a paper towel. The cheaper, the better. Then load up your brush. I like bristle, but you know, whatever you like. And just remove as much paint as possible. You want like nothing on there. Basically what you need is to scrub something to get any paint from the brush. And that is essentially what we're doing. Only the raised areas will pick up the paint, so everything that should be highlighted will be. I want kind of like a weathered, beat up, kind of grungy look, in, like in the drawing. Uh, so we're gonna do a mucky wash. And then I'm gonna use a paper towel to pick up some of the paint. And just actually splash a little extra on there, really dirty it up. Same goes for the turret. I do a wet wash and get rid of some of the extra paint with a crinkled paper towel but it needs to be brightened back up a bit, so I'm just hitting it with a little more dry brush. And uh, there's some symbols and numbers in the tank, so I figured, why not add them in? And I also painted those treads. Well, then all that's left is to assemble this thing, and we can go to the Glamour Zone. If you haven't subscribed, now would be the perfect time. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon who come and hang out with me during my crafting streams. Special shout out to folks in the Raws and Above tiers on Patreon. Daniel Martin Garcia. Mr. Edward, the sparkly vampire horse that talks. YK Lee. That Johnny guy. Andrew Merchant. And Jeff Ward. Every one of those folks is an angel. And if you would like to join them, you can do so at patreon.com slash thriftycrafts. If you want to see more videos, well, hit that subscribe button because I have more in the works.